All right, going over materials that I do and do not use. Um, I'm going to start out with the fabrics I don't use, and that'll lend itself into understanding the reasons that I do use the things that I do use. Um, we'll just get this one out of the way. This is a cotton terry, so 100% cotton, terry cloth, the same as um, you find in every towel out there. It's a fantastic option for upcycling, so an old towel or a cheap towel, inexpensive that you can get at your local like Target or whatever. Um, that's a great option for upcycling um, or for making your own pads. If you are a pad maker or if you're buying pads from a pad maker, you should expect a better material than terry cloth. Terry is just not very absorbent for how thick it is. And that means that you have to have a really thick, bulky pad in order to get you know, decent um, absorbency. And again, it's just, um, it's not a, a, something that should be used in pads that are for sale. Uh, cotton, excuse me, this is organic bamboo velour. Um, it's a really soft organic, you know, it's a really soft fiber overall. Um, and it, it is mostly of a natural material, at least uh, the bamboo, but cotton, or mm, bamboo velour. So uh, all of the OBV organic bamboo velour, um, it's all made with at least spandex, sometimes also polyester. Um, and this is commonly used as a top fabric because it's really soft. It's also commonly used as uh, an interlabial pad material, usually like a hand dyed, so it'll be colorful and pretty. I just have this one silver color, but always with, it's always made with spandex and or polyester. And I'm about to go off on why I'm, uh, why I don't like any of those synthetic fibers. So organic bamboo velour or, or OBV is also one that I don't use um, as a topper fabric or at all. This one, um, I mean, they all kind of look similar. This one is uh, completely different. This is 100% uh, polyester. It's called Minky, and Minky is a really, really soft fabric. I mean, it's just, it feels really nice. And that's why it's ridiculously common in, um, uh, as a pad topper. Almost every pad maker out there, if you look at their stuff, most of their pads are going to be a Minky top, and that comes in all kinds of prints as well. So you can get lots of really cool designs and everything in a Minky, um, but it's 100% polyester. And the problem with that is that all polyester fleeces, that's, you know, all of these ones that I'm about to show you here, including Minky, release microplastics. Every single time they're in the wash, they release um, a, a certain percent of my, uh, of their weight in microplastic. Um, the first couple of washes are the worst, and then it's consistent, and it kind of levels out, and then every single wash, like for the lifetime of the fabric, releases microplastics. Um, that's a concern for a product like this that's against a, a sensitive area like the vulva, because if you're releasing microplastics all the time, then you're releasing microplastics against the vulva. Um, there's, I mean, that's a, obviously you have the, the vaginal canal, the vaginal opening. You're, there is the potential for this transmission of microplastics. And that, it's just, a, that's, not, that's not a good thing. Um, I have not found any like clinical research um, about the effects of, say, microplastic. Um, the whole goal with a, a reusable, I mean, yeah, we want to get rid of the reusable plastics and it's better for the planet. But one of the other big things is that there are chemicals that leach from disposables through the vulva. And so if we're using something like this, where it's, it may not be le leaching chemicals, but it's releasing microplastics. So it's one of those where nothing is ever going to be perfect, but the microplastics released by things like Minky, I do not want to have in my products at all. Um, this is another 100% uh, polyester. It's called microfleece just because it's a, a very, very lightweight and thin, so it's micro. They're all micro fiber, um, but this is called microfleece, and this is common in uh, cloth diapers. There's another fabric I didn't grab for a swatch, um, a wicking jersey. It's also 100% um, polyester, and, and it's used in, again, cloth diapers and pads as a topper. Um, the benefit of things like this uh, minky it is a stay dry, so it doesn't ever really feel wet, though the fluid, the flow goes right through. So it doesn't necessarily feel wet. Um, it also tends not to stain because it's really difficult to stain synthetic fibers. Um, but all of them, they're all used in, in uh, baby diapers and in pads. And again, they're just releasing microplastics against the skin. So um, I consider that bad for, for babies and for um, anyone using a pad. Um, this last one that I'm going to show you here, this is called Wind Pro. Um, 
and it's a, a high quality it's not these are not inexpensive fabrics um, but this is really high quality polyester um, fabric and this it's windproof you can't blow through it it's waterproof but it's meant for jackets um, and so like like I'm wearing a jacket this is not technically windpro but this is a fleece jacket it it does release micro uh, plastic when I wash it um, but I'm this is not rubbing up against you know very intimate areas of my body um, wind pro um, is often uh, super common for a backing material and the reason it's used there is that one it's waterproof because it's designed to be water and windproof um, but two it's it's a pretty good grippy fabric so it, when you have this in your underwear uh, attached to the, or against the gusset and then you have snaps that snap around the gusset this holds the pad in place pretty darn well and it's uh, waterproof um, or at least very very water resistant and so it prevents leaks um, cutting through um, so the problem that I have here back to the original microplastic I'm very much anti microplastic uh, but it's also very insulating and so it means that uh, things aren't going to be able to breathe as well I do use a waterproof layer in um, my heavier absorbencies um, but it's a very very thin layer so it's waterproof only instead of this insulating and it's kind of it's like the difference between you know a very light windbreaker and well uh, a warm winter jacket I, I do use the windbreaker material kind of thing it's not actually windbreaker material but that, that's the idea is it's a very thin waterproof layer instead of this thick waterproof and insulating layer so these are all the fabrics I do not use again cotton terry cloth uh, here organic bamboo velour minky micro fleece wind pro or soft shell um i i don't think that any of these should be used um talking about the waterproof layer i'll go through what these are this is what i use is pul polyurethane laminate now this right here is just the polyurethane this is a polyurethane film um, it's one mil thick and this is exactly what's used in all pul options all these options have a PUL adhered to them. Excuse me, a, a polyurethane, a PU layer adhered to them. And then it's just a matter of backing. The most common is this guy right here. This is just poly, polyurethane laminate. It's the polyurethane film, shiny side. If I can get it to focus, probably not, maybe. Shiny side is polyurethane. The non-shiny side is the knit that's polyester so that's the laminate the polyurethane is laminated against this backing side this is the standard used in well anything that's using pul this is the standard for baby diapers so a cloth baby diaper has a pul layer and that pul is what makes it waterproof um, these are commonly done in really pretty prints this is a pul normal pul polyester laminate in a pretty print these uh, sea turtles there are other ones like these rainbow skulls so there, there are a lot of options for pul and you can get all kinds of prints um wazoodle where i get almost my pol and nature's fabrics they're, they're two options with a good variety of different prints um, in pul so this is the standard um i don't use this and the reason i don't use this particular version is because it's it's meant to be an outer layer like it's really tough so like on a baby's diaper this is the outer layer uh, the same with this this is the outer layer that you see the problem with that on a pad is that a pad sits inside your underwear and it needs to kind of stay in place um, like the wind pro fleece the wind pro fleece is grippy and grabs your underwear um, pul backing is slick so the outside of a baby's diaper is pretty slick it will not stay put in your underwear and that's why um, most pad makers don't use it. If you buy pads from a company like Amazon or, or something like that, they're almost always backed in a PUL, so it's waterproof, but it's slick. It just moves all over the place. So that's a problem um, if it's the actual backing layer. So I, instead of using it as a backing layer, I use it as a hidden layer. So it's, it's hidden within the layers, and so it doesn't need a, a thick backing. So instead I use this, which is lightweight. You can kind of see my finger through there it's a really thin um, polyester weave so it's the exact same thickness of film the polyurethane waterproof film is the exact same thing it's just on a lighter weight polyester knit and that means that the whole thing is just a bit lighter weight because it doesn't need to be on the outside 
um, I am trying to find an option that blends this polyurethane with something that I do use, like a cotton flannel. So on the back of uh, my pads, I use cotton flannel. And flannel is 100% cotton. It's um, a combed or, or brushed cotton, which means that it's got lots of little fibers that stick out. And all those fibers kind of help it grip the underwear, and that keeps it in place. So I have been ordering swatches and a couple and some other yardage of different fabrics and colors um, where it's a natural fiber like cotton or bamboo and it has a polyurethane laminate. So like this one right here, polyurethane is laminated on a cotton fabric. This one's just, it's really too thick. It's its a good, like, it, it'll grab other fabric really well, but it's, it's kind of heavy. So I'm not gonna be using that one. But there are other options, like here's an or organic cotton fleece. Um, you can kind of, let me see if I can get it to, there we go. You get that kind of fleece side, and then on, on the other side, it's the poly, urethane. So I'm trying to find options that um, provide, uh, that use a natural fiber, um, has the waterproof polyurethane laminated on the back of it, um, but is also nice and a grippy fabric so it stays put in your underwear. But then I have to get it in something other than white. And I can do that if I do a custom order, but if I do a custom order, I have to order a thousand yards. And I don't have $14,000 to drop on a special color of something that I have no idea how much I'm gonna use of. That's not an option for me. So I'm trying to find better options, but um, again, something that's nice and grippy for the underwear, has the polyurethane laminate on the back so that it can be waterproof, and that way I can eliminate the need of this polyester um, hidden layer. So those are the PULs. There are a lot of options. Again, there are some really fun prints. Um, the prints are great for a baby diaper because it's waterproof and the outside doesn't matter and it's easy to clean. Um, but... Uh, that's not an option for a pad. Um, all right. So I think that covers, this is, these are the things that I use for uh, waterproofing. These are the fabrics that I recommend you do not use. Um, finally, fabrics that I do use. The first and foremost is the cotton topper. The, so as a top layer, the top that actually sits against the skin and the vulva, um, I use 100% cotton fabric. In lots of different prints, this is one of the hot man prints um, that I use generally premium cotton. Um, quilting cotton tends to be a bit more rough. It's not, doesn't, not, not just not a staple. So I, I really emphasize premium cotton. Um, premium cotton has a bit more stretch to it than um, quilting cotton. Quilting cotton is pretty stable. So I do like these. And again, you can get all kinds of different prints and I'm just trying to have fun with them. Um, Spoon Flower is a custom uh, fabric printer. And so I can get different things there. They're cotton, sateen, and poplin tend to work, like they're heavy enough cotton, um, but they're just not quite right. And I'm, I'm, I wish that they had something closer to the premium cotton that I get, but is what it is. Um, this is organic, um, he <clears throat> heavy organic bamboo fleece. Tickle in my throat, I'm gonna pause the recording. And I'm back. Heavy organic bamboo fleece. Um, now there are, not all HOBF is the same. Um, heavy Organic Bamboo Fleece, or abbreviated HOBF. Um, there are different weights. I use 400 GSM, that's grams per square meter. It just talks about how much fiber is really there in the fabric. Um, so I use 400 GSM. It's it's nice and heavy without being ridiculous. It's really flexible and comfortable if, as a, against the skin or as a core layer, uh, super, super absorbent, it's great. Um, most HOBF is also made with spandex, which sucks. But it's made that way because this knit is, if it's just the, the bamboo and cotton blend, then it's not very stable and it distorts. Um, and that makes it more difficult to sew. And that's why it's much more common with spandex. Um, my supplier, I think, is now out of the spandex-free option, which is upsetting. I just ordered the last um, roll that they had. So um, I'm either gonna have to go to a different weight maybe or, or something, I'm gonna have to figure that out. But the 400 GSM is, is, is really like, like this sweet spot. So one layer is super absorbent, two layers is fantastic. Um, but this one in particular, it's normally a light white color like this. Come back to our, there we go. Um, this is hand dyed. Um, and so 
Um, I when I do the hand dye, this is for something like an interlabial pad, or um, a topper for like a gusher, perhaps. So this is I only hand dye when it's going to be you know seen. Most of the time, I use the HOBF as a core absorbent layer, so then it's not seen. The other time that I um, dye the HOBF is for the gusher pads because there is a layer of HOBF below the top layer. And the idea is that with a gusher pad, you make cuts on there. I have another video on how to make that. You make slits in the top layer and then you let it fray in the wash, which exposes directly the inside core. And so I want the core to be a fun color, especially when it's with hot men. The slits end up looking like gashes and this looks like, you know, innards or something. Um, so this is, again, it's spandex free, 70% bamboo viscose, 30% organic cotton. Um, no spandex or polyester in the ones that I use ever. Um, yeah, HOBF. The other thing is, um, whether I dye it or not, I, this goes through five full hot water, high heat dry cycles. So wash dry, wash in hot, hot water, dry in on high heat. It gets rid of all the shrinkage but it also gets rid of all the excess um, material and, and lint, and it, it really activates the absorbency. Um, if you get a pad that has not been treated that way, and most, maybe, like mo all makers will pre-treat once in one wash dry cycle. But if you get a pad using these materials that hasn't been treated, then you have to wash and dry it yourself five times on uh, hot water and high heat. And those are tend to be bad for other materials. They're bad for like PUL, they can degrade some of the other stitching and things like that. So you want to avoid hot water washers and high heat. So I do that before they ever get inside of a pad. So all of my HOBF has been fully pre-treated, um, wash dried five times so that it's nice and absorbent. And that includes the hand dyed. Um, this flannel, this is just an example. Um, flannels, I it's whatever I, I have available. Um, if I do end up getting one of the cool PULs, I'm going to phase out the flannel, but I'm going to use up my stock. Um, but flannel is what I use on the back of the pads, um, at least currently. It's a grippy fabric. It helps keep it in place. It is a wear layer, um, so it'll it'll be durable. It will pill. That's the way the flannel is. It will pill. Um, but again, it's 100% cotton. That means that you don't have any synth anything synthetic rubbing against any part of your skin. Even though this is the bottom layer and generally doesn't come into contact, uh, the bottom layer is going to touch skin, and so I try to use something that doesn't have synthetics. Um, one more fabric in here that I didn't show is this. This is cotton muslin. Um, it is a very lightweight cotton, um, and I just use this as a stabilizer because I get the HOBF without spandex. And so, like, my liner pad is just one layer of the HOBF. That, that core is so floppy by itself without any spandex in it, that I have to use this cotton uh, stabilizer. So this is just a stabilizer for the core. That helps it um, sew properly. Um, last but not least, perhaps one of the most important ones is Zorb. Z-O-R-B. It's a specialty fabric. Um, it's a felted material. It's not woven or anything. It's a felted material of four different um, kinds of uh, fiber. So if I recall correctly, it's bamboo, cotton, tencel, and polyester. So there are synthetics in this layer. I only ever use this in uh, as a core layer. And this is Zorb Original. Um, there are like Zorb Bamboo and Zorb Cotton, which are supposed to be super absorbent. Um, but I don't, I haven't found a need for those. So I use the Zorb um, and it's extremely drying. It's really rough on my hands. So you want to be careful with Zorb. Um, because Zorb is so absorbent, I do not place it anywhere near skin because it will dry it out. It dries, it dries out my hands really bad. I wear a full on respirator, not respirator, but like KN95. We're all familiar with KN95 masks now. Um, I wear the KN95 when I'm sewing and, and surging these because the fibers are just so drying, it'll dry everything out. Um, again, it's, it's a very, very drying fabric. So I don't want it against skin. I think that's important. Um, the other versions, so like Zorb in bamboo or Zorb cotton, they are, they don't have that same, you know, synthetics and everything. And they're designed to be, you know, a, a top layer against skin, like they're woven instead of being felted. 
but that still concerns me because they are such thirsty fabrics and th such thirsty fibers. If they're against your skin, they're going to dry out your skin. So I don't use it that way. Because I only use these as a core layer, like deep in the pad, um, I also get it with Silvador. Silvador is a, a 3M men produced silver ion treatment for fabrics. Silver is naturally antibacterial and antimicrobial, which means that this material will kill bacteria that comes in contact with it. Um, I Because of all that, I don't want it near the skin. Again, for all these reasons, away from the skin. But those deepest layers of the pad, that's where you're most likely to get something growing. So antimicrobial for that deep core. The other thing is that Zorb, because it is so thirsty, it'll pull moisture out of the other, like the HOBF layer, and spread it across the entire pad. So when you have a really big, and this is just a, this is a core, um, this is a postpartum core. But when you have this really long core, you want something that's going to be able to wick. So I mean, you'll bleed right here. You want something to wick it all the way up here and all the way down there so that you're using the entire length of the absorbent core. Otherwise, it just pretty much stays there. Zorb does an amazing job at wicking moisture all the way along the entire length. And so Zorb just, it, it makes the HOBF much more useful. Um, it creates this, this, they work together really well. So I use it that way. This is also really easy to rinse out. So this does not hold water as well as HOBF. And because of that, Zorb is, um, it tends to have compression leaks. So, I mean, if you sit on a full pad, then it might leak. Um, HOBF doesn't have that problem. And so their powers combined, this uh, means that um, it'll help wick everything in, um, help the whole core hold more uh, fluid. But then it's also easier to clean that deepest layer. And so it's all those different reasons. That's why um, I always do HOBF as the top layer of the core and Zorb as the second or deeper layer of the core. Um, and if I do, for the higher absorbencies, there's more of these. And it's just a tapered piece that goes in between. And so it may be a little bit more Zorb, but maybe an extra layer of HOBF. So lots of options in there. Um, HOBF, again, is it is a fantastic uh, core layer because it is extremely absorbent, extremely thin, and very maneuverable. Like, it's just comfortable. It's not going to mess with you. So um, liner pads. I thought I had a... Yeah. Here's a liner pad. Um, the liners are... They're simple, they're lightweight, um, they fold over. They're just they're just kind of there. Um, and and here is a, an example of where you can see I've got um, the quilting stitches. So this stitch right here is what is attaching the core inside to the top fabric. And you can see that quilting does not go all the way through. And so the backing material can, you know, there's the backing material coming out. The core is still right here attached to the front layer. Um, and that's so that the core is always against the top layer and begin the cut the top layers against the skin. And then I also do, as you can see, all these little, little tufts of thread. Um, I do a, a perforation using a perforating blade and that just lets all these little things just kind of flare and, and fray and it makes it much more absorbent so that things get to the core really quick. Basically the same idea as a gusher. Um, but I do this to all the pads because it's quick and simple, unlike the gusher, which just takes a lot more steps. This is like the halfway mark of a gusher. Um, still, you know, it's unnoticeable. It's very, very tiny little phrase, but it means that um, fluids can get to the core a little bit quicker, and it reduces the likeliness of fluid rolling off of the pad before it, it gets absorbed. So it's an example of a liner pad. Um, yeah. Okay, um, finally threads. I'm going to go over threads a little bit. Um, Guterman, 100% uh, cotton. This is a 50 weight thread, uh, th triple ply. And this is a really nice strong thread, and this is what I use for almost all the stitches you can see. No, all the stitches you can see. So the quilting stitches, stitching the core to the top layer, this uh, turn and top stitch, the top stitching all along here, and even right here you can see I stitch a heart indicating the absorbency of the pad this is one heart so that's the lightest it's uh this is the liner um all of this is with the exact same 100 co cotton this is actually egyptian cotton from guterman uh cotton thread nice really high quality thread 
definitely more expensive than polyester threads. Polyester thread, I do have and I use, um, but I use that for things that aren't gonna be anywhere near, you know, anything like this. As an example, I'll grab out this guy. <clears throat> This is a wet bag that I make. Um, it's a single pocket wet bag. This is in a glow in the dark fabric. So a lot of this has, um, like lots of these things have a special glow in the dark print on them. Whatever it is, I don't know. I don't want to use that for anything that's going to be, you know, coming into contact with your skin. I thought it was really cute at the time. And then I was like, oh no, don't do that. But a wet bag, that's not on your skin. It'll be in your purse, in your bag maybe. Uh, wet bags are, you know, it's. PUL line, so I use that same liner, but on the outside I'm using fun cotton fabrics, um, snap and everything, but on these ones I use polyester thread, um, this thread, and the reason that I use polyester here, first of all, polyester does not wick, and so along the seam it means that it's not gonna, it, it's less likely to create a leak or a wick of moisture from the inside of the bag out, and then polyester is a very it's inexpensive, um, it's great for sewing, high speed, um, low lint and everything, and it's also very, very durable. Um, it's got more stretch than cotton. Cotton thread doesn't really stretch, polyester thread does. And so it ends up making this a little bit more durable for getting thrown around and, you know, stretched out. If you fill it up with, you know, a whole bunch of pads or like a baby diaper or something like that, it stretches, it, it, it's a workhorse. Polyester thread is the standard. So I do use polyester thread, but not in the pad. Um, and not in the core. So when I do a core, um, I do surge the entire core, the entire edge of the core. Um, this example core is a it's number two, number three, they both use the same core. One has waterproof, one doesn't. Um, Zorb on the back, heavy organic bamboo fleece on the top, and I make sure that I get the Sherpa layer up against the, the top layer. The reason for that is if I got the the flat side, if the flat side of the HOBF were against the top layer, then it's sort of like two layers that just always, they're both, you know, woven or knit away from each other. When I use the Sherpa layer, all of those little fibers over the process of wearing and washing and everything else, they start to kind of integrate together and then it locks the core into that top layer of the pad. One more reason to not let bam or not let zorb be that first layer of the core because it'll work it the fibers will work into the top layer. I want the fibers of the bamboo uh, fleece to work into the top core because that's totally comfortable, totally okay. Um, mm -hmm. over here on my serger right now, this is all cotton. So these are cotton cones. This is not Guterman. This is a less expensive cotton. It's still hard. To, it's still four or five times as expensive as polyester thread. Um, but when I'm when I'm surging the core, for example, I only use cotton thread. Even though it's not touching anything, it's behind the top layer, it, I, I think it's still worth it to go with 100% cotton thread so that everything in a pad, um, it may not all be the, the more expensive Guterman thread, but it's all 100% cotton uh, quality thread. Um, I also use this thread when I'm doing facial rounds. So a facial round like this, um, this has got, again, the, the heavy organic, the HOBF on one side, the soft Sherpa side, and you can just use it. It's just, it's just so soft and pleasant. So you can use this um, for everything that you would use a facial round. You can use this for uh, removing makeup, for applying or blending makeup. Um, you can use it for applying like toners or things like that. And then I also have on the other side, this is 100% linen. Um, linen is a very soft fabric over time. Um, but it never really loses its thing. Because it's a woven, um, the fibers uh, act as kind of like a little scrubby. And so this side is like a scrub side, so you can actually scrub your face. It's still super soft, very gentle exfoliant, um, but it'll work. And for these, I also use 100% cotton thread. Um, for the same reasons, polyester is just, it's a no-no. Um, whenever I, whenever it's appropriate. This is touching your face. It's, I mean, you're sitting there wiping your eye and everything. You don't want little particles of polyester to just wipe off and get in your eye. Um, so uh, one more thing where I just use all natural fibers. 
This took a little while to actually get. This is um, a mesh that's 100% cotton. It's like a delicate wash bag. It's just prototypes where I'm just playing around with it. Finally got this fabric um, from a company in Canada. Um, simply, I don't remember what it was called. I have to look it up. I'm going to try and link everything in my description. But the idea here is that it's just a simple cotton mesh. You could use these as like produce bags and things like that. Um, so you're not releasing microplastics in the wash. But this, in this way, something delicate, like a little facial round or interlabial pad, can be placed inside of this so you, they don't get lost, they don't get scrunched or tumbled too much. They're sl slightly protected, but still get fully cleaned. Um, so, 100% cotton threads, polyester when it's appropriate, um, PULs, uh, there are a lot of options in here. Um, again, you don't want PUL in a pad of the, as the backing layer because it's just slick. As a hidden layer, that's where you want it. Um, unless you're doing something like PUL on like a flannel or Sherpa or something like that. Uh, HOBF is the go-to. Wind Pro is what every single pad maker is using on, as a backing. I'm disappointed in that. Um, there's one last tangent I have to go on, and that's for interlabial pads. And I think I might have an interlabial pad. Okay. Um, here's an example, example of an interlabial pad. This is the, the, the leaf shape. Um, I, I prefer the, the teardrop here, whatever. Anyway, so interlabial pad, just the heavy organic bamboo fleece on both sides with the Sherpa side outward. It's the really soft side. So it's two layers of the, um, the HOBF. Interlabial pads um, go between the labia. And so there are lots of ways you can do it, but I mean, you just kind of fold it in half, set it between the labia. And and you can wear this with or without a pad. Remember when you go to the restroom so that it doesn't get in the toilet um, because none of these are made to be flushed. These are all made to be washed and reused. Um, but an interlabial pad actually sits between the labia. And that means that you really got to pay attention to what's in this. Um, Organic bamboo velour is probably the most common for interlabial pads. There are other things out there. This is one of the most common, and again, it's got spandex and sometimes polyester, but it's definitely got spandex. So I think that's a terrible idea. And even if it's, I mean, um, this is a silver color, but this is this gets comes in white and everything else, and some makers will hand dye the OBV and make ILPs out of it. Um, so that's a no-no. The other thing that people will make is Zorb. They will use Zorb material. And again, the Zorb is that super, super absorbent drying material. They may not use this one. This is Zorb original. They might be using, they, sh they should definitely not be using this. This is not meant to be um, a, a surface fabric. This is meant to always be in the, inside of other layers. Um, but that's Zorb original. If they're using Zorb bamboo or something like that, there's like Zorb 3D, there's all these other Zorb materials. If they're using one of those, okay. Um, it's still super, super thirsty. That's the whole point of a Zorb material. Super drying. And that's, you don't want that in between your labia. What's more is that they're using Zorb with Silvador. That means that they're not just drying everything out. They're using an antimicrobial treatment in between your labia. And that's going to kill off all vaginal flora that's, that it comes into contact with it. So that's my tangent. Um, I'm really disappointed in makers who use any kind of Zorb for an interlabial pad, and even more disappointed if they use an antimicrobial as an interlabial pad. All that's just terrible. And again, the, H, uh, the OBV that's got spandex in it, um, one more thing to not have in contact with, with your labia like that. Um, yeah, there's my tangent. The facial rounds and interlabial pads I don't have available on my Etsy. Um, I hope to have them on there, but for now, um, the ILPs and the facial rounds, I usually just include like one or two as a freebie if I have them available, if I've made enough. Um, the linen fabric that I use in the, the facial round, Linen is, is, it's like my favorite material these days. It's, it's a unique thing. It's a unique fiber. 
comes from the flax plant, flax flower, and it uses the entire plant, so it's very different from like a cotton or bamboo structure. Um, where it comes out just like this, bamboo has to go through a complex chemical process where they like shred everything into tiny little fibers and then reconstitute and spin that as um, what they call viscose. So it's uh, bamboo viscose is just a reconstituted bamboo fiber. Um, cotton, you get those little white tufts of cotton, you pluck that, that tuft of cotton, and then you clean it and spin that into fibers. With flax, the entire plant, the root, the stalk, all the way up, the entire plant gets pulled up. Um, it gets uh, redded in, in the field and then um, broken up into tiny little fibers. So the whole stalk of the plant is, is what makes up the fibers. Because of that, these are really long, hollow fibers of the plant material, which means that it's very wicking. Um, so these are great in like the summer. That's why you get like linen blouse or, or linen something because it's very airy and draws moisture away. It's, it is um, bacteria resistant. Um, yeah. Odor and stain tends to be odor resistant and resist staining. It can be dyed pretty darn easily if you prepare it properly. But yeah, linen, it's my new absolute favorite material. I don't use it in pads yet because it's just not it's not really not designed for that i guess i'm sure i can find some uses but not yet um, i do use it again in the facial round as like the exfoliating side um and i do make washcloths like i use a linen washcloth and it is divine um okay i think that's all i've got for this 37 minute uh video i apologize for making another very long video if you have questions, please let me know. Um, check out my TikTok as well um, for shorter pieces of things like this. Um, this started as a TikTok series of the no-no fabrics and then good fabrics and everything. Um, but there's a lot of information to go over and it's hard to do. So 37 minutes here to do that. I'll try and link everything in the description. Thanks.